Hey guys, really quick, a lot of you guys are new to the channel and you haven't been following the whole Kate, William, Meghan, Harry saga, okay? So I wanted to put together a definitive timeline to let you know why everybody is so concerned about Kate Middleton missing and why nothing the palace has been saying for the last three months makes sense, okay? It's going to be really quick. Hold on. And in the end, um, we're also going to talk about how William is so fit. You know what? Let's get into it. Strange elements of this story, particularly when you look at the timeline of dates. So let's go back in time and do that. 12th of September, 2023, Kate Middleton reveals a finger injury, which she claimed happened when she was trampolining with her kids. Innocent enough. Then three weeks later, on the 5th of October, Kate is pictured with two fingers still bandaged together. Seems like it must have been a pretty rough trampolining injury. On the 22nd of December, Wills and Kate announced an official trip to Italy scheduled for early 2024. Now, if you're planning major surgery of any kind for early 2024, it seems unlikely that you would also announce a trip to Italy at the same time. Then, December 25, Christmas Day 2023, the last verified public appearance of Kate Middleton and also of the three children. Everyone looks happy and healthy. December 28, three days later, an ambulance with police escort is seen flying out of Sandringham, where the royal family was spending Christmas. There was no statement from the royals as to what that was about. Then, January 17, 2024. The Princess of Wales' condition potentially more serious admitted to this London private hospital on Tuesday, undergoing planned abdominal surgery described as successful. At this stage, the palace won't say exactly why the princess required surgery, choosing to keep her diagnosis private. But she is likely to stay in hospital for up to two weeks. All her engagements expected to be cancelled until after Easter. It's announced that Kate Middleton is recovering in a hospital called the London Clinic. Now, during those two weeks, there are no reports of visits from her parents, her siblings or her children. On January 18th, the day after surgery, Prince William visits the London Clinic. It was the first and last time he was known to visit, where she was allegedly in the clinic for another two weeks. On January 24, UK papers report that the inner circle of the Waleses were shocked to hear of Kate's surgery and that they weren't aware of any health issues. January 26, King Charles reportedly visits Kate in hospital, but still no known visits from her kids or parents or family. January 28, Spanish journalist Concha Caleja claims Kate Middleton is in an induced coma after her surgery and she cited unnamed palace sources. The next day on January 29, Kensington Palace claims that Kate was discharged from the London clinic to continue her recovery at home. At this point, Kate hasn't been seen publicly in over 35 days and there are no photos of her exiting the hospital. On February 1, palace aides slam the Spanish journalist's story, which is a bit odd because they rarely comment on rumours. February 5, King Charles announces his cancer diagnosis, but doesn't say what it is or how bad it is. On the same day, UK Magazine published an article which said Kate's recovery would now be nine months and not three. Two days later, on February 7, Prince Harry jets to London for a fly-in, fly-out hospital visit to see his dad. It lasted all of 45 minutes. Queen Camilla also visited the King a number of times. But you know who didn't visit? William nor did he issue any kind of public well wishes. On February 9, reports emerged that Kate is, quote, on the mend and has left Windsor to continue recovering at Sandringham. On February 20, Prince William puts out a statement on their joint social media account talking about the conflict in the Middle East, but there is no mention of Kate. William also used his solo monogram at the top. In the same breath, he says that Kate is doing well. Now, it's a big deal for someone like the future King of England to pull out of an event like this at the last minute and also just tack on that his wife is fine. Now, at that point, it had been nine weeks since Kate and their children had been seen publicly. That didn't pass the online smell test. So the next day on February 28, the hashtag where is Kate Middleton started trending. The day after that hashtag started trending on February 29, Kensington Palace released a statement addressing the online rumors. A spokesperson for Princess Kate said, we were very clear from the outset that the Princess of Wales was out until after Easter and Kensington Palace would only be providing updates when something was significant. The spokesperson reiterated the princess was, quote, doing well. On March 4, this photo emerges. It's seemingly Kate Middleton being driven by her mum in a black Audi near Windsor Castle. And it's safe to say that Kate looks different, particularly her chin. Six days later, on March 10, the royal account posted this picture and oh boy. The caption read, thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months. Wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day 
and signing off with a cheerful C for Catherine. Surely that's going to keep everybody happy and leave questions about the princess's health answered, right? Wrong. Almost instantly it became clear that the photo was edited, like very edited, and not very well either. And the major photo agencies who released these photos noticed that too, and just hours later issued what's called a kill notice because the source appeared to have been modified. The Royal PR team went into overdrive, and then this tweet was posted by the social media account attributed to Kate. In a statement, Kate allegedly says, Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion that the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. See, for Catherine. What a mess. The internet went into overdrive after that announcement. Theories went viral like a this one, which made a rather striking case that the photo was actually taken in November of 2023. And if you know anything about Kate Middleton, you know that people obsessively track her fashion. So of course I was able to find a bunch of blogs breaking down exactly what she was wearing. Now, yeah, I know that the sweater in her picture was black, but stick with me because it's Photoshopped. I think they changed around the clothes on the photo, but look at these boots and look at the pants. This is the exact sweater. It's from a company called Rice, I believe. And look at that neckline and look at this part right here. I've upped the exposure quite a lot so that you can see the ribbing better, but look how it lands on her like thigh area, the thickness of that belt of the ribbing, and then look at the turtleneck. Yes, I know a lot of turtlenecks look the same, but I do believe that this was photoshopped to be darker and it was just that cream sweater because they don't make it in another color. They make it in cream and in camel. Now let's look at the boots that she's wearing in this new photo. It's the same exact boots as this baby bank visit that she did with her kids. And some claim that the image is actually a reworking of her Vogue magazine cover from 2016. And that brings us to March 11, and this vague paparazzi image, which shows William in a car seated next to someone who may or may not be his wife, Kate. Now, Kensington Palace is standing by their claim that Kate will return to public duties after Easter. Okay, so that's a timeline more or less. Go ahead and watch the Royal Playlist if you want to put some meat on those bones. But there's also a personal component between William, his mindset with Kate, the royals, the peasants he rules over, and also Harry. Listen to this, and I think you're going to be cut up to speed, and then I'll see you tomorrow to catch up on the mess. Prince William has officially entered his fuck around and find out era with the British press. This whole Kate Gate debacle is about two things and two things only. Number one, the Kensington Palace press team is an actual incompetent joke. Their entire PR plan is let's just focus on having Kate and William compete with Harry and Meghan. They have nothing else going for them other than that. Number two, William has been flexing a little too much. He thought that serving Harry up on a platter to the British tabloids would earn him more control over the press intrusion to his own family and more control over his image in the press. He made one fatal miscalculation. The British press didn't actually want Harry out of the country. They never wanted Prince Harry to leave. They wanted him to comply. William wanted his brother gone because I genuinely think that he has hated Harry his entire life. Diana made no secret about the fact that she intentionally gave Harry more love. She felt like William was going to be taken care of as the next king, but Harry would be thrown to the wayside, which is literally exactly what has happened. And then on top of that, Harry went and married William's crush. He had a crush on Meghan Markle from her suit days. So Harry went out and married this bright, beautiful, famous American girl, William was like, you're not allowed to have that. You're not supposed to have that. You're supposed to marry a British girl, same as I did. William feels like I'm the next king. Everything good should be mine. Harry should get nothing. The fact that he is married to Meghan, the fact that Invictus Games is so successful, the fact that he's now in America living his best life, I think genuinely keeps William up at night. And he spends his days thinking of how can I hurt Harry? How can I punish Harry for daring to exist and be happy in that existence? But the British press doesn't care about about any of that. All the British press cares about is selling papers. That's why they kept beating Harry and Meghan with bad press. They were trying to beat them into submission, not into omission. They didn't want them gone. Harry and Meghan sell more newspapers than William and Kate, Charles and Camilla combined. And now 
that's pretty much gone. The British press has virtually no access to Harry and Meghan anymore. There was a little bit of hope when Charles first announced that he was sick and Harry washed over. The British press was like, okay, good. This is our chance. This is how we get him back. But William shut that down. And after he shut that down, he flaked on this huge engagement. On top of that, Kate is nowhere to be seen. Okay, William, you have run out the competition, guaranteed that Meghan and her kids will never be back. Now you're also not showing up to engagement that you're supposed to be at. Now Kate has been MIA for two months. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. They call it a gilded cage for a reason. It's gilded, yes, but it is a cage. And the British press are the keepers of the key. Harry and Meghan didn't want to play the game. They weren't going to play the game. Well, really, Meghan didn't want to play the game. Harry actually did play the game for his whole life. And then Meghan was like, we ain't doing that. And so Harry was like, okay, period, we ain't doing that. William felt like if he gave up Harry to the press, then that would give him more power with the press. The opposite happened because now they have so much dirt on William. Instead of being in control of the press, he is now indebted to them, which is why Kate had to do that super obvious PR drive with her mom. Why they released that idiotically photoshopped picture with the three kids because that's what they have to do. They have to offer themselves up to the press. They have to offer their kids up to the press. Everything we're seeing now, every scandal, every bad headline, all of this is the press reminding Kate and William, we own you. Unless you want to be treated like Harry and Meghan, you're going to do what we say when we say it. When we say we want to see Kate, we mean it. When we say we want to see the kids, we mean it. And you better produce them. That's the only thing I disagree with. That's wishful thinking because you know he won't. You guys, listen, join me tomorrow so we can cover the next, I don't even know what to say, blunder, cover up, exposing the truth. This is far from over and we are not stopping until we figure out where the F is Kate.